Hey team, Macho Models here. Wanted to do a, uh, a video talking about the new uh, Harder and Stenbeck Evolution AL Plus airbrush that I picked up from uh, Spray Gunner at spraygunner.com. So uh, I've been working with this Badger Patriot Velocity for the last year or so. And just a really like a quick comparison, the kind of the best way I can summarize the differences between these two airbrushes is effectively the, the Badger is what could be called a tank and the Harder and Stenback, which is called the H&S for short, is more like a Porsche. And if that um, analogy resonates with you, you can probably kind of bounce out of the video right now, or maybe you're curious and wanna stick around. Um, but some of the principal differences are, uh, yeah, so with the tank analogy, I'll kind of roll over there and talk to the, the, the differences between these two. So um, working with the Badger Patriot, it's uh, almost indestructible. So there's not a lot of seals, rubber seals, for instance. Um, it's a lot of metal to metal contact to the point where you can kind of see on the front of my airbrush where I've had to use pliers a couple times to screw that up. I'm, I'm sure there's a better way to do it and that's just what I've been doing. Um, so a lot of the mechanical parts are very durable, but they're not exact. So like a really good, for instance, you can probably see how much plays in the trigger here. And when you go into a bunch of other mechanical components on this, you'll see there's a lot of play. Um, the downside is precision, right? So it's, it's a very durable airbrush, but when it comes to really having fine control over this, and then also, you know, just simply fatigue, running an airbrush for an hour, uh, two hours can be a little exhausting. Um, you'll start to notice a really big difference between the tank and the Porsche. And, um, and and that's where I'll start to kind of parse out what some of the differences are. So just out of the gates, the Badger is, is quite heavy. So the Harder and Stenback, the way, let me put this back correctly. <laughs> um, this is actually a heck of noticeably lighter. So this is all made out of an anodized aluminum. And you can see it's really finely machined and really, really lightweight. Um, one of the best parts too about, I mentioned, uh, you know, Porsche, and I also said that for a reason, this is a German airbrush. And if anybody's really curious about what the difference is between German manufacturing, US manufacturing, and Chinese manufacturing, I encourage you to take a quick pause in this video and look up one called uh, Chinese versus German ball bearing. And what you'll notice is that they take a Chinese made ball bearing and a German one, and they spin it. And the German one spins infinitely longer. And for those of you who might not know, the, the Germans are, are very well known for exceptionally precise engineering. And that just shows all throughout this airbrush. It's, it's a great setup. Um, another really big piece, aside from the weight and just the simple construction of this airbrush, is the trigger. It's, it's so tight and perfect. Um, one thing that's different from this and my Badger is that this isn't really adjustable. So you get this single trigger tension, but fortunately the Germans have kind of thought of everything for you and the tension that comes with it, I find is it's good. It, it might be a little on the heavy side, but it's certainly nothing for, for me to kind of scoff at. And doing kind of a quick breakdown, I really find these mechanisms to be fascinating as well. So the needle is really accessible. So when you're in mid paint, it's pretty easy to be able to come out. Um, this is a really well precise engineered needle. And I always thought, I thought this assembly was really interesting compared to my Badger. So you'll notice here, it's all, it's just these two components right here and there's no seals. So this single kind of assembly is a nice um, piece on its own. And depending how long this video is, I might give you a little breakdown on the Badger as well. And then the trigger is also an interesting assembly. So you can see it has this bearing and then it's connected to um, this retention lever right here, which uh, is a really nice piece of um, construction. And then the other nice part too, you can see all this stuff is plated. So even though you might get chemicals and fingerprints on it, it comes off relatively easy. Um, so coming into some of the differences here, you'll notice, I'm gonna go I have a quick release right here. And this is the pressure or the airbrush and uh, the compressor meets the airbrush. And you'll notice the engineering here. So this is where you start to see kind of that German engineering coming together. It's really, really well machined. And then you also have this O-ring right here, which is one of the small fail failure points here. So I pointed out the Badger is more of the tank. This is where you start to get to that Porsche kind of German difference. So this seal is uh, vulnerable to failing. So when I first had the airbrush, I was doing a lot of cleaning with lacquer uh, thinners after reading 
reading a lot about from uh, Duke's models. And the lacquer thinner works great. Just understand it's very, these types of O-rings are exceptionally sensitive to the point where actually, after I melted this one, I, I have a couple extras on standby. Um, but a great piece of engineering right here. Moving on to the cup. So there's not too much I would, uh, if you do pick up this Evolution AL Plus from Spray Gunner, I really recommend that you get, this is the five milliliter cup. Um, the one that it comes with is two milliliter and it's very small and you'll run through paint quickly. This is a, a, a well, it's, I think it's about a $27 extra add-on, but well worth it. Or they actually, I think they might sell it package wise. And if that's the case, I would have gone with this versus the, uh, the two milliliter cup. So going into the airbrush, you can see these are what are called PTF seals. So it's actually like a Teflon seal. Unlike the one that I showed you just a moment ago with this rubber seal, this PTF seal is almost invincible. So you can put any kind of solvent or anything corrosive on here and it's not gonna fail you. Um, and then coming to the last part, this is what I was really keen on in terms of a big difference between the Badger and my uh, and this airbrush is this piece. So I'd never been able to bubble and I know bubbling is like a little contentious, but effectively what the concept is is that if you mix your paints inside of here, you can pinch the end and spray. So on my other airbrush, the tip just was not really conducive to being able to do that. So I find I had to mix a lot of paints outside of the cup, which it's fine. It just kind of slows the process down. But if you're doing really small detail painting and just want to mix, it's really nice to be able to do it inside there. So you can just do a simple pinch. So this is also a really cool aspect of where the German engineering comes in. So I showed you earlier the front of my old airbrush where I had to turn and crank. And with this one, the way it's engineered, this metal is so precisely engineered that it just slides off. I didn't do anything except just a tiny bit of wiggling. And then here's a really interesting uh, piece as well when it comes to engineering. When I take this off, this is where the needle housing lies. So I really like, and, and again, if I have a little extra time, I'll show you the difference between a badger and, or if anybody wants to see it, I can do a badger breakdown too. But this is the needle. So within my badger, the needle is tiny. Like it's like this big. And there's been a couple times where I've been cleaning it and it's fallen out and I've just freaked out because it hitting the carpet or my workbench, it can be impossible to find. This is a nice hefty uh, needle. And the other nice part, it has a PTF heat seal to fit into here. And then it joins up with this unit right here for a really perfect mating and everything just slides in really well. And again, you have another O-ring right here. So this is one of those vulnerable O-rings that I mentioned earlier. Um, this is another one that I corroded the first night that I had it. So I ordered an extra one of these. And that's the breakdown of the airbrush. I mean, believe it or not, it's 7.43 and I got through this relatively quickly. Um, I hope you're able to kind of just see how simple all this stuff is. Again, this body weighs absolutely next to nothing and all the parts are really, really well engineered. So kind of the long short here is, you know, depending on how much airbrush you're using and how keen you are on your process and getting it done right and getting it done fast, I personally think that spending your money on a nice airbrush is really worth it. I'm, you know, I have a full-time job, so when I come down to my modeling bench, I really wanna use my time effectively. And I know some other people may probably um, petition for cheaper airbrushes, and that's fine. It's all really kind of just dependent on your style. But I would say, you know, the amount of time that I spend with an airbrush every single week, the 200 plus dollars that I spent on this so far, or the two weeks that I've had have really, really been worth it. And I highly encourage you to kind of take a look at their whole line. I got referred to the Evolution AL Plus from a, a YouTube video where uh, they were talking. Sorry about that momentary interruption. So again, um, just wrapping up where I found this YouTube, a uh, Warhammer, kind of person was talking about um, the video is titled spend money on an airbrush already and uh, I wholeheartedly agree and I appreciate this recommendation so to any Gundam Gundam or uh, sci-fi modelers out there check this out give it a look um, spray gunner is an awesome resource and it has also every single part that you need for this is all one-stop shopping so check it out and be sure to use my coupon code if you do go look at it and uh, thanks for tuning in and shoot me any questions that you have I'd love to answer anything about uh, upgrading or getting your first airbrush